In this video, we're going to discuss images. To open up an image, we'll go over to our toolbox. We're going to scroll down to our images section, click on the image tab, and draw a box out anywhere on the canvas. This will automatically launch our Explorer. Now, you may have to navigate to where your images are that you want to use, but in our case, it's opened up right where I wanted it to. We're going to grab this image right here and it loaded the image at its default size. And what I mean by that is if I click on image again and draw a teeny tiny little box like this, go back and grab this apple again, boom, it's going to pop up really bigger than the box I drew because the image is going to open up at its original size. Okay, So we're just going to delete that by hitting the delete key, come back to this Apple we have here. We're going to click it once so the handlebars are exposed and we can move and position this anywhere we want on the page. Now, several things you should know about the handlebars is you can grab these and reposition this any way you want, width and height. But if you get too much bigger than the original size, you'll start to see some pixelation, some graininess, some fuzziness around the edges here. You don't really want that. So when working with an image, be careful with it, play with it. But if you want to have a large image, then make sure you're working with large images. You can't take small images and stretch them out. It, they, it just won't work right. It'll look really poor. All right. So we have this big image stretched out here. And we want to get back to the original size. Right click on the image and down at the bottom restore original size and it goes back to the original size. Now you can maintain the aspect ratio of this image by clicking and dragging on the lower right hand handlebar. By doing this you can pull the image out and it will maintain the aspect ratio. In other words it won't make it too fat, too tall, it'll keep it all in perspective. But once again, stretching it too big will, also, will, will still create some type of, you know, jagged, fuzzy edge, and you don't really want that. So we're going to right click and restore original size. Okay? Now, three common types of images for the web are PNGs, JPGs, and GIS. PNGs are typically, or for the most part, are the only images that are transparent. Let's open another image here and I'll, I'll show you what I mean here. Let's grab these keys here, okay? Now these keys are a transparent image. Position this a little bit smaller. Let's scroll back up a little bit. And as you can see, I can place these on top of a background, another image, and you can see right through this. And what this comes in handy for is when, I'm going to get rid of this apple here for a second, is when you have a background color. So let's go down here to our layers panel. And I'm just going to stretch out a layer here. object properties, style, and our background. Let's do a solid color of, uh, let's do this little lime green here, okay? Now, we can take the image, and as discussed in a previous image, or a video, if we drag this image into the layer, to where the layer turns blue all the way around the edge, we know it's inside that layer. But this is what a transparent image will do, is, uh, it allows to see through it to where it'll blend right in. And then of course if we want to move the layer and the image, since the image is already inside the layer, we can do that with the layer highlighted and move that around. Let's talk about a workaround for another image here. Let's open up uh, another image here. Scroll down to the images and let's grab this rose. Okay. Now, it's really big, so let's shrink this down by 
grabbing onto the handlebar on the lower right hand corner, maintaining the aspect ratio. Now, if we try to place this into this layer, obviously it doesn't look so hot. So there's a workaround with that. We can actually create another layer or create a later layer period anyway. Let's create a layer. Boom. Now let's drag this image into this layer. You see the highlighted blue so it's inside the layer. Now we're going to come back here and click inside this layer so we want to select the layer. We're going to right click to bring up the drop down menu, object properties, we want to go into style, background solid, we're going to do color, but this time we're going to do more colors. We're going to grab the select tool. Let's see if I can. Yep, I got these in the way here. Let's see if we can't move this over just a little bit for now. Highlight the layer, right click object properties, style, more colors, then we're going to select the eyedropper. Now we're going to eye drop inside this picture here, the background. We're going to click on that, we're going to say OK, whoops, OK, and then OK. And it's what it did is we basically selected the background color to match the background of that image. So now if we highlight that rose, we can move it anywhere inside this layer and it doesn't look so out of place. And once again, we can increase the size, decrease the size, we can move it around. Now just make sure that when you're using layers with your images, make sure once again that when you're moving your images around, that blue line stays highlighted around the layer. If we come out just one pixel, then it's not part of that layer anymore. Okay? So just be aware of that. So make sure that when you're moving stuff in, in layers, it doesn't matter what it is, if you're working with layers, make sure that when you're moving them around and you want them to be part of that layer, that you don't go past the blue bar okay so I think that's it for now working with images it's uh, fairly easy and um, to get into uh, the Im image properties highlight the image right click and then you can go to object properties with the drop down menu um, and once again this will give you the location of the image as it as the the image that's stored on your computer you can add some alt text or title text to help with your SEO if you need. You can do borders around the images, radius, opacity, you can do a little reflex reflection here. You can actually uh, use the image as a link, which is very common, link to a page with inside your website or an external page. Um, the effects we're, we'll cover in another video, but you may want to play with this a little bit just, just to see. But you can add a watermark so if somebody downloads it, your logo or some text or whatever is on the image, uh, events, some animation. And, and images can actually have padding as well. We can uh, add some padding to an image to where, uh, let me cancel this out. As you can see, this image comes, this is would be the border. If we added a border as it is where the, the handlebars are, if we wanted to, we can add some padding. And it's what it would do is it, was, it would increase the size of this box here so it, it in other words it pushes the border away from the image itself so and that's what the padding would do and once again I, I encourage you to play with that a little bit but that's a brief tutorial on images it's really easy and um, experiment I, and I encourage you to uh, play and experiment and um, there's also a properties you can actually see the properties over here as well uh, so it, should you need this image to be an exact size, we can change that here, like we can change this rose, two pixels difference, uh, it's not going to make much difference, but you know, just in case when you're working with a particular website and you need the image to be a specific size, you can actually come in here to the properties panel on the uh, right hand side and actually 
give it a lot of detail as far as how, what size you want that to be, okay? All right, well, I think that's about it for now. Uh, this is the images video, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.